Um, before we move on, we've got a quick question from Assemblymember <coughs> Gavras, I think. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Katie, I was interested in what you were saying about um, sort of difficulty with, so where provision in theory exists, things like the access ramps and so on, sometimes in practice it doesn't quite work out as smoothly as it, you know, might, might supposed to. And I was just, I suppose I had two, two thoughts really. One is um, obviously uh, whether, whether that's getting better or worse over time, you know, things like a, a bus pulls up at a stop and it hasn't lined up with the stop properly or it doesn't lower or the ramp doesn't come out, whether that's something that's getting better or worse or if it's just a sort of background level problem that just seems to always be there uh, and, and to what extent that happens. And I suppose the other thing is whether, because one of the things we hear from bus drivers is they're obviously under time pressure, there's a timetable, they need to sort of keep keep the bus moving. Um, and I, I can't remember whether you mentioned it, but obviously one of the other issues would be people who board the bus and then maybe take slightly longer to find their seat. So they're still finding their seat when the bus is setting off again, which you know is a, is a cause of trips and falls and you know injuries on, on buses. And I don't know whether that whether, you know, whether, whether, whether you find that also is an issue, and again, is it getting worse or better, or just a sort of steady background problem? Yes, thank you um, for those questions. I think both of those relate to driver behaviour, um, and I think the issue is that I've mentioned before is that often drivers are just not equipped with the the, the kind of confidence and expertise and skills that they need to be able to provide that service. And this comes down to um, the provision of driver training. Um, as for whether things have changed, um, I don't have any kind of concrete evidence on that, but what we hear from our members is that it is a constant, that things aren't getting better, but they aren't necessarily getting any worse either. I think um, issues with drivers has just been a long-standing issue, um, yeah, for the last couple of decades. Um, but in terms of training, I think there's a real issue with, um, it's a very difficult scenario and a very complex issue um, with the kind of the lack of retention of bus drivers. Um, so bus drivers coming to the um, industry new will need to be trained. That training will need to be repeated. Um, I think at the moment, as it happens, bus drivers who are new to the role get training in all of those things, you know, how to correctly pull up to the curb so it aligns, how to deploy the ramp correctly, how to lower the bus, all the things that you need to do in the big red book. But then they don't have that that training repeated um, after that first initial batch of training. Um, and then if you are a driver and you just never happen to pick up a disabled passenger, which, you know, could happen, um, if you were never in that scenario and you're never kind of practicing those skills, you might not actually know what to do in that situation. So I think there's there's a point around the f kind of initial training, but there's also a point around that repeating of that training. Thanks. I wonder if I could just ask John. I haven't heard. Obviously, we've just been hearing about things that bus drivers aren't doing where they could do better. I just wonder what the what that looks like from the bus driver's point of view. Whether you feel time pressure is an issue, or whether it is training, or whether it's you know some bus drivers just. Sorry, Dan. I do apologise. That's my. I, I, John is the person who's not here, and, and Dan, I apologise. So, so the, the, the um, Dan, the bus driver we have remotely, I wonder whether you could comment on wh how that looks from the driver's point of view, because I don't imagine, you know, you know, people like to take sort of pride in their work and doing a good job. Yes, uh, can you hear me all right? Yeah, yeah uh, it's, uh, it's a tricky situation. Uh, drivers are sitting in the cab, surrounded by the protective screen, and often he tries to help give information to people, and they can't hear them because uh, the voice isn't getting out. We could do with a, a speaker near the doorways to um, allow people of all ages and disabilities to hear from the first point of view of what, what service we have and where it's going to. And if they're blind or disabled or, or whatever, there could be a screen and an audio to tell people what's happening. But the driver is sitting there, he doesn't get a lot of information. And it, it, the drivers could easily, I mean, the technology's there. Drivers could be informed how things are, are, are going on, how delays, uh, accidents, uh, diversions. Uh, these things generally are not passed to the driver. And uh, that comment earlier is, is a, you know, the, the comment about the drivers being on the route for, for weeks, maybe, and, and not encountering any. Uh, disabled persons or wheelchairs, and then they come across one and they've got to stop and think for a minute, and sometimes the moment's passed, and 
that they don't always get the right opportunity or, or the correct training, if you like. Uh, I, I think bus drivers probably should have more training with for you know for disability access and letting people know what's happening and helping them everywhere they can. But um, the drivers sitting in the cab there, all boxed up, and you often can't be heard. Um, so there must be simple uh, solutions to allow the driver to be heard more and allow them to help passengers more. But you should, they should have more training in a regular English. So that's uh, I'm agree with that. Thanks, Dan. I apologise for getting your name wrong. So if it, that, it's useful to hear that you think it's maybe a training and experience issue rather than something else. Thanks. Thanks, Chair. It's only a go. I don't know if you noticed that Claire Walters has had her hand up. Can you possibly go to her before you hand over? Yes. Claire, would you like to uh, be very keen to hear what your thoughts are? Hi. Um, I do wear another hat, which is the uh, uh, Disability and Access Ambassador for the Bus and Coach Industry. So... Um, one of the things I thought was germane to this is that in terms of ramps breaking down, large numbers of, of operators have started to replace their automatic ramps with manual ramps because they're just fed up of it not being uh, able to deploy when they want it to. I mean, that can also be because uh, the drivers don't necessarily pull into the curb uh, correctly or aren't able to sometimes because of um, ludicrous parking by other vehicles. Um, but the other point I wanted to make is there is actually no excuse uh, for drivers not to be adequately trained because it's been required for a very long time, since 2013, by what was then European Passenger Rights Regulation, and now with passenger rights in bus and coach, that every bus driver needs to be uh, given disability awareness training. And depending on whose um, interpretation you use, disability assistance training. So if a driver has not been receiving that, and it should be part of the annual CPC stuff that they do, um, then that's not legal. So Bus Users UK is also, is also the reporting body um, for breaches of that act. So if anybody comes across that, please let us know and we'll... Take it up with the drivers. Uh, sorry, not the drivers. Sorry, Dad. Uh, with the operator. Thank, thank you very much. I apologise for not seeing your hand. Great, I don't that, know if there's anyone else I've missed. But that's I, a good offer. No, that's everything. Thank you very thank much. You. Cheers. Um, next questions come from Assembly Member.